boneless pork chops cook through quickly making them ideal for a midweek dinner but they don't have a lot of flavor on their own you really have to gussy them up with something yeah so chops are often glazed to dress them up but if you've ever glazed a chop before you know that the glaze ends up on the plate not on the meat so right. today we're going to cook chops where the glaze actually stays on the meat all right so First, the glaze. Now, most glazes out there use a jam or a jelly. Mm -hmm. It gives a nice sheen, it gives sweetness, and it makes a nice glaze. The only problem is, is that when you heat up a jam or a jelly, what's it turned to? Yeah, it turns to a runny mess. A liquid, and so that's never gonna stay on a chop. So we searched the world over <laughs> to try to find something that would stick to the chop that would provide sweetness. And today, we're gonna use apple butter. It's sweet, it's tangy, mm -hmm. but there are also a lot of solids in there, so when we heat it up, it's not gonna run all over the place. So we have three tablespoons of apple butter here. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna add two tablespoons of maple syrup for sweetness, mm -hmm. a little bit of glaze, one tablespoon of Dijon mustard for some tanginess and a little bit of heat. One teaspoon of soy sauce for seasoning. Mm. And a half teaspoon of cider vinegar just for a little bit more acidity. I'm just going to make sure that is well incorporated and everything is stirred together really well. Okay, that looks great. So that's our glaze. Nice and easy. Easy peasy. <laughs> okay, now for the chops, we are going to use boneless pork chops here. Six to eight ounces each and they're about inch to three quarter inch thick also very uniform, so they're gonna cook through really evenly. Okay, so now I'm just gonna season these up with a little bit of kosher salt. We have a teaspoon of kosher salt here. Okay, that's our seasoning. Now, for cooking, high heat is the enemy of a good glaze. When you sear a chop, those proteins on the outside are gonna seize up and release moisture. Aha! Moisture comes out, not good for the glaze. It's gonna wash the glaze away. That makes so sense. So we are gonna go low and slow. Low and slow means less moisture coming out of the chops, meaning our glaze will stay in place. And better for the meat, because you'll have moister pork. Yeah, so I have a rack set in a foil lined rim baking sheet. I've sprayed this with nonstick cooking spray. Make sure the chops don't stick to it. I'm just gonna lay these out here like this. Lined with foil, I'm guessing for easy cleanup. Yeah, easy cleanup is always necessary <laughs> for weeknight cooking. Also, the wire rack will ensure that we get heat all the way around the pork chops and cook evenly. Okay, before we cook these, I'm just gonna apply a base coat of glaze. <laughs> like, like painting. painting. <laughs> right, so what that base coat is gonna do, it's gonna dry out in the oven and create a nice tacky surface. And then when we go back to apply the rest of the glaze, it will stick really well to the chops. So I'm just gonna start with a teaspoon. So not a lot. Not a lot, it doesn't need to be that much. Teaspoon per chop. And I just wanna brush the sides and the top. We're not gonna worry about the bottom here. Okay, Julia, I think that is a good base coat. Nicely done. Got this all touched up and ready <laughs> to go. So we are gonna bake this in a 275 degree Ooh, oven. Ooh, that is low. Yeah, quite low. And what we're looking for is that we want the internal temp to be 135 to 137. So just below serving temperature. And that's gonna take 40 to 45 minutes. Okay. Mm, smelling good. Yeah, it doesn't look like much yet. Just wanna make sure that these are at the proper temperature, 136. So what I'm gonna do now is we're gonna apply the rest of our glaze. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna use a tablespoon. Well, I can see how the glaze is gonna stick nicely to that chop because the chop is just tacky. Yeah, it's, it's the perfect base coat for this glaze. Nice. You also know there's no moisture coming off these chops. Right. Because we've gone nice and slow and low. Okay, again, just the tops and the sides. There's gonna be moisture coming off the bottom as the pork rests, mm -hmm. so it doesn't even make sense to glaze the bottom. But we do wanna get a nice, even coat here. Looking better. It's starting <laughs> to look better. Okay, while I finish glazing these, I'm gonna ask you to set the oven to broil. We're gonna put these under the broiler, so the really high temperature is gonna kind of caramelize and char the mm. bits and dry that glaze out and make it nice and glazy. So we're done glazing. The broiler's hot. We're gonna put these chops underneath the broiler three to six minutes. And what we're looking for is we're gonna get little charred in spots and it's gonna be nice and glossy. Okay. Let's check on the progress. Oh. Yeah, it's been three minutes and you can see that we're getting some charring around the edges and that glaze is nice and tacky. Those turned a corner right fast from looking a little homely to downright beautiful. The apple butter has stayed in place, mm -hmm. kept everything on there. It hasn't run off. You can see them sizzling. They look great. They do. We got some charring around there. The glaze is actually sticking to the mm -hmm. chops. 
will stay that way. So I'm just going to transfer these over to a platter carefully. I don't want to disturb our glaze that we work so hard at. Let those sit for five minutes. Let the juices redistribute. So when we cut into them, we don't get juices all over the place. Then we can eat. All right. I think these chops have rested long enough. It's time to eat. Good. I've picked my chop. Let's call in my name. Julia's chop. Yeah. Now, I just want to show you one thing. We have a little bit of moisture coming out of here, which is natural. But if we had seared these chops, we'd have three times as much as that. That's not a lot. No, it's not. And I'm just going to add a little minced parsley for you. Mm. The glaze has stuck. Oh, perfectly cooked. Mmm. Mm. Mm -hmm. The apple butter is so reduced yeah. that it packs a really big apple-y punch. Mm -hmm. but you can just see how moist those chops are. That's thanks to the slow and low heat. Yeah. Sweet, tangy, touch of acidity. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you, Keith. I love these pork chops. Great. I'm glad you like them. So if you want to make these sweet but savory glazed pork chops, make a thick glaze using apple butter and Dijon. Roast the chops low and slow in a 275 degree oven and finish glazing under the broiler. From America's Test Kitchen, a foolproof and fabulous recipe for mustardy apple butter glazed pork chops. This is definitely going a weeknight rotation. Good, I'm glad. Oh, my daughter's gonna love these. Thanks for watching America's Test Kitchen. What'd you think? Well, leave a comment and let us know which recipes you're excited to make, or you can just say hello. You can find links to today's recipes and reviews in the video description. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel. See you later. I'll see you later.